elections. The meeting has therefore ended inconclusively, with government representatives saying they will need fresh mandates from the finance ministry to continue with negotiations. According to the public sector workers, the daily base pay is lower than government's newly announced daily minimum wage of 14 cities, 88 pesos. Daniel Opoku is our labor correspondent who has followed with the negotiations and joins me in the studio. Thanks for your time, Daniel. Another meeting which ended inconclusively. Is, is How did it all start? Well, um, when you read the Public Financial Management Act, it allows for negotiations to be done every year. And the law says that negotiations should be concluded in the month of April. Then that will help the finance minister to incorporate the details of the negotiations into the budget. Into the budget. Right. So revenues or funds will be allocated to pay organized labor. But unfortunately, this time around, the negotiations span to, the, to this time that we mm. speak now. So when we speak to labor, we realize that they are happy. Some, way, some are happy because government was unable to uh, arrange or conclude negotiations by April. Because the arguments, if they had concluded in April, clearly mm. their mega earnings were going to be chosen. What were the figures tabled today? Now, today government tabled 18%. The earlier figure was 15%. Mm. The government has now moved the figure from 15 to 18. And Labour initially tabled 60. They have also moved from 60 to 65. The initial figure that Labour tabled was 140% was what labor was asking for. So when they went to their caucuses, they agreed on 140, then zeroed it down to 60%. Now they have moved the figure from 60 to 65. Government has moved from 15 to 18%. We can even take a listen to what Dr. Isaac Bampuado and a host of other labor union leaders said after the negotiations today. We progressed to 18. We also progressed to 65. And government says they are going to consult. We also stated that we're going to meet our constituents and then we also give them feedback. So this is how we ended. But are you not being unfair, especially not when... Being unfair, as you are aware, we read the budget and there's an indication that there will be an increase in VAT of 2.5. And then also it has been indicated that the tax brackets are going to change. So this is fresh information that we've brought on the table. And these things are feeding to your negotiations? Exactly. That's why you want 65 now? Yes. It also boils down to the ability to pay. Have you considered that? Well, ability to pay sometimes some of us will get confused because some of revenue institutions have been given bonus. And once you are giving bonus, that's, that's mean you've, you've performed perfectly and efficiently. So we don't want to hear that argument. Once you give anybody bonus, then the person has worked to your satisfaction. And that's what we know. We are asking for 60 and are giving 18. No way. There's no way that we accept that 18 percent. It goes down to the ability to pay. Have you considered that ability to pay is something that I don't want to hear? Then I've told you several times. Ability to pay worker salary, but they have the ability to pay when they need the money. I mean, it is unfair in this world country. Ability to pay might be something that can that should cut across everywhere. But if when it gets to some people, there's ability, and when it gets to workers, there's no ability. I mean, it's unfair. It is not like labor is unwilling or unreasonable. But if you look at what is happening today, just take the budget. You can see that from the budget statement, taxes have been increased and for that matter uh, members of my union are going to be worse off because their disposable income is going to go down that is number one uh, VAT has been increased for that matter it means they are going to spend more and other areas whatever we are asking for it is just to cushion the system how do you respond to those who believe that labor has been has taken an entrenched position it's not about an entrenched position you see when you look at where we have come from in terms of what we have gotten as base pay percentage increment over the years. Yeah. It has put us in a very um and in a very bad position in terms of the gap between the minimum wage and then the base pay, which is hovering around 33.1% thereabout. And therefore, um, when you take it from there, then it means that we, we, are, we are near 
anywhere close to even the um, the agreement zone that we are looking at in terms of the 60 percent proposal that we have put on table so we are looking forward to um, the government team coming with something better next time and these appear very legitimate concerns being expressed by the workers. Exactly. So these are some of the questions which played out in negotiations mm -hmm. today. Because the finance minister, after he had read the budget, informed the decision of Labour for them to change their position. Mm -hmm. So Labour came to the meeting today with the intention to change their initial position. The reason we heard them mentioning from 60 to 65, because... 2.5% was mentioned in the budget, and you also have an income cap ceiling of about 30 to 35% currently. Mm. All those things played out in the, in the I'm negotiation. I'm pretty much today. interested in knowing who the representatives of government were at this meeting. Mm -hmm. Right. So, the leadership of government was led by the Minister of Employment and Labor Relations. Mr. Bright, we are the Deputy Minister of Employment and Labor. We can take a listen to him. Uh, we have had to table something any time we have met. Uh, but Labour insists on a figure, so uh, we are going back and we will reconvene. We tabled 18 percent and they have rejected that once again. Are you not disturbed about that? I am disturbed. I, I am disturbed. But in the spirit of negotiation, we will go back and come again. That's it now you don't have the mandate, you need another mandate today. Of course, it's about mandates, and it's also about fiscal space. It's about money. It's about ability to pay. So I am also worried that they are also not moving to come and meet us at where we can come to a compromise. Do you sense a deadlock? Well, uh, as we move along, that may play out if that is the case. Then we may have to go to the National Labour Commission. That's what I'm saying. When we get there, we'll cross. But for now, Nothing like deadlock has been declared. No, no, but you don't look so confident in your responses. <laughs> My brother. It appears, <laughs> it appears that what? It, it appears you don't have confidence in the whole negotiation process. Because because, because, because for the fourth consecutive times, we have had to table something. And Labour says that they are unwilling to take it. So it's, it's a clear case of frustration, very genuine one indeed. So it is not like I am not happy. Of course, you don't want me to be happy when there is this state of affairs. Right. So when are you meeting again? Uh, yeah, we are going back and we would, in fact, I must commend Labour. Anytime we call them, uh, they, are, they, they, they come and for us to engage. Thank so you. anytime we call them, I'm sure they will come. So, so government is willing to go up again? Well, we are going back to look at what we can do. And then uh, if we can go further, we will let the media know. So, Daniel, when is the next meeting? Well, unfortunately, they could not tell us when the next okay. meeting, but we are hoping by close of next week there should be another meeting to continue the discussions. Thank you so much for your time. And Daniel Opo